وعلى أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين وحبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل الله وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المكرمين الغرر الميامين سيما بقية الله في الأرضين وحجته على الخلائق أجمعين سيدنا وإمام زماننا وصاحب نعمتنا وولي أمرنا مهدي هذه الأمة وطاوس أهل الجنة الحجة بن الحسن العسكري فداه أرواح العالمين اللهم صل على الله قال الله العظيم في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل Is it possible? Is it conceivably possible for us to reach perfection? We've been talking about the nature of perfection, what we mean by perfection, the defining characteristics of perfection. And we've explained how perfection is a relative concept. It's not absolute. The perfection of anything or anyone depends on the purpose for which that thing or that person was created for. Having known this, and having also known that to reach absolute perfection, we need to follow the path of the absolute. We need to follow the role of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the absolute perfect creator of all there is. We need to follow in the path of the people assigned by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our guides and as the signs that lead to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we've explained. Now knowing both of these things, first, that we need to realize that perfection is relative and not absolute, and two, that for us to reach perfection, we need to follow the path of the men and women of God. The answer to the question of whether or not perfection is a concept that we can or cannot reach is in the affirmative. We can reach perfection. But it also means something else. Having established those two premises, it also means that perfection isn't a single state of being. Remember, it's relative, it's not absolute. Therefore, no one can ever claim to have reached absolute perfection. Therefore, perfection is something that has many levels in it. When we talk about the Prophet of Islam, when we talk about the immaculate household and the members of the household of purity and infallibility, the Ahlul Bayt, even they have not reached the ultimate state of perfection. We have explicit traditions telling us that every Thursday night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the knowledge of the Prophet. He increases the wisdom of the Imams. That's why we recite our, pra our praises upon them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجا يُصَلُّون is a word that is derived from the root term يَصِلُ يَصِلُ is to reach is to reach out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other words continually sustains the Prophet. He continually prays upon the Prophet. The prayer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to sustain him, is to sustain the Ahlul Bayt with his continued knowledge, wisdom, and, and greater and higher levels in paradise, and higher levels in spirituality. 
Now, if they had reached the absolute state of perfection, there would be no higher level, would there? But their levels are always and constantly being raised. And this is an indication that there is no final frontier when it comes to perfection. There is no limit as to how high a person can elevate him or herself when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to submission, when it comes to the acceptance of God's will, and so on and so forth. So yes, we can reach perfection. But perfection is relative, and we should always strive for more. We should always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise our levels even more. Now, here's a question that I'm sure has crossed the mind of many of our youths. It's New Year's Eve, right? And some people might be wondering, why is it that while everybody else around the world, whether Christian or Buddhist or Jewish, are celebrating New Year's Eve? Yes, Christmas isn't celebrated by Jews, but New Year's Eve is. So while everyone is celebrating New Year's Eve and the beginning of a new Gregorian year, why is it that we sit here and mourn? We sit here to listen to things that inevitably make us depressed. We sit here and cry. We sit here and sob and lament and beat our chests and beat our heads. And all these things are elements that do nothing but depress you, right? So why? Why are we so different? I've actually written a book with this title. Why are we different? Because the fact of the matter is, you look at Muslims, and you've got the absolutely weird Muslims. You've got those hardcore, crazy people who use the name of this religion in order to insult this, the, core, the very core of this faith. They use the name of this religion as a vehicle in order to reach their political ambitions. They use the symbols of this great faith in order to gain acceptance in society. And this is nothing new. I mean, religion has always been abused. That doesn't mean that there is an inherent deficiency in religion per se, which is what Richard Dawkins and the other atheists try to tell you. To tell you that religion is inherently evil because people have constantly used religion to commit evil acts. Well, this doesn't mean that religion is evil. It means that, yes, religion is very easy to abuse. Why? Because it has to do with people's emotions. Because religion is about a very deep connection between the devout follower of that religion and the ecclesiastic leadership. The people who sit at the top of the pyramid of the religious establishment. Therefore, it's easy for those people who sit at the top of the pyramid of the religious establishment to abuse the religion. It doesn't mean religion is evil. It's just like saying power is evil or authority is evil because authority has always been used to commit evil acts. Well, that's not true, is it? Once again, back to the main question, why? Everybody's being jubilant, everybody's happy, everybody's celebrating. And you know what? As believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have nothing against being happy and jubilant in principle. As a matter of fact, there is a hadith where Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam, Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa Muhammad wa Muhammad wa The Imam says, Laysa minna, he is not from us, he's not among us. Man taraka dunya, man taraka akhiratahu li dunya. He's not one of us who abandons the hereafter for the sake of this transient world. If you turn your back on the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I were to abandon the great pleasures reserved by the Almighty Lord in paradise, for these petty self-indulgent impulses in this world, I obviously would not be among the ranks of the Imam. But then the Imam adds another portion to the hadith, which is absolutely amazing. The Imam says, وَلَيْسَ minna," And he is not one of us, مَنْ تَرَكَ دُنْيَاهُ لِآخِرَتَهِ He who abandons this transient world for the sake of the hereafter. 
In other words, nobody's telling you to be a goth, to wear black lipstick and live in a cave. Nobody's asking you to inflict constant pain and misery on yourself. Nobody's telling you not to indulge in the, in, the, in the legitimate pleasures of this world. Nobody's telling you not to eat, not to drink, not to get married, not to have fun. Nobody's saying that. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants is for all these desires and temptations to be channeled into the right direction. And so that we don't lose sight of the fact that we have a bigger purpose for which we were created. A very basic example is for a group of guys who want to sit in the car and drive around. Now, if they had no purpose in their little drive around the block, what would happen is that they would simply drive around the block, right? They